What was your position within that year in relation to the management and submission of tenders? I would be integrally involved in the management and submission of all tenders. Now, in paragraph 6.25, you speak about prayer meetings, um, and I'm not going to prevent you from giving this evidence, but uh, perhaps you should tell the Chair why you were referring to these practices at Basasa. Chair, if I may. I'm a Christian, and when I joined Basasa, one of the predominant reasons why I made that decision because I believed it was God sent. However, every morning there was, I was told there was a prayer meeting in some mornings and I'd got to know, know a few people and they would attend. And between 12 or 15 people would attend every morning and this was led by Gavin Watson. He would lead the prayer meetings and I was impressed. He would share a verse out of the Bible and it would be discussed, and, but everybody would have to pray out aloud. That was the rule. I, as Gavin Watson's right-hand man, everybody looked to me. Did I attend the prayer meetings? So I was compelled to attend the prayer meetings. During 1999, they extended the prayer meetings. Another employee, a youngster, who, my, who I had kind of grown fond of and taken under my wing to mentor, Leon Fantonda was at these prayer meetings, said that these prayer meetings should happen actually every day if you want God's blessing over the company. Were there all night prayer meetings in addition? Yeah, just give me a second, Mr. Chair. Uh, do, you, do you want uh, us to stand down to give you time to. No, no. Okay, all right. In particular, what. Did this indicate to uh, you Mr. Pretorius, about... Uh, I'm the witness. Yeah. I think he may have something that he is thinking about whether to say or not, maybe, or, or, or he might be needing a little bit some time. He, I, I wanted to see whether we should uh, adjourn for five minutes, but he says no. Not necessary. But maybe you might just give him time to say whether he wants to say anything further before your next question. Say what you wish to say about that, and then I will ask you a question about this evidence. So we started every morning, and, at the, and I believe, I really do, that it was sincere. So from 6.30 to 8, it would continue. But it become, became a kind of a cult. They would invite prophets, not much dissimilar to what you see on TV. They would invite certain pastors from a occasion. They would lead these prayer meetings. They have all night prayer meetings as well. But quite simply, it was a mockery. And I'd compromised by even being part of it. But you see, Gavin Watson was a very charismatic leader, and he had a lot of influence over all his employees. I think that answers my question. All right. That answers the question I was about to ask you in relation to uh, Gavin Watson's strength as a leader um, and his degree of influence over his employees, but you've answered that question. I want to deal briefly merely to introduce the document um, with the information contained in Annexure A to your statement. And that appears at page 107 of Bundle S1. If you would go to page 108, please. There's a diagram there that refer to in some shows various, various entities in the left hand column.
are these people that you will mention in evidence from time to time, and are these the positions they held? Some of them have left, but these are the positions they held at the time. All right. We may have to provide more detail to you in this diagram on page 109 to show the period for which these positions were held. And then if we could go to page 110, various head departments. Again, some or all persons will be mentioned um, from the department. Have to redo this uh, schedule to show the periods and the offices held by the various people you will mention in your evidence. That's correct. And similarly, on page 111, there are the various members of the Watson family, um, and on page 112, other uh, individuals who are mentioned in your statement and the offices that they held. Correct. Page 113, again, officials uh, in the NPA and uh, yes, the NPA and other law enforcement uh, institutes or Correct. institutions, page 113 and so on. Um, Chair, the, the purpose of that document is simply uh, as an index so that anyone reading the statement can make reference when a name is read to the position held either within the Basasa group of companies or within officialdom, uh, on the other hand. Okay, and, that's uh, fine. It, it needs some revision before a final version is put up. Thank you. Just to fast forward, because we're dealing at the moment principally with your employment history, what actually occurred during the course of your employment, we'll, we'll deal with in much more detail in due course. But what happened in August 2016? I don't know if you want me to refer to my statement, Chair. Or if Paragraph 6.27. Well, you can uh, speak right. without referring to, to the statement if you, your recollection is uh, quite fine. But if you do need to refer to the statement, okay. feel free to do so because this is a long time ago. Uh, so, yeah. Well, quite simply, Chair, in, thank you, uh, in 2016, August, I resigned. Um, the purpose of introducing that at the stage is to introduce two agreements uh, that were entered into that appear as Annexia B and Annexia C. Now, the circumstances in which these agreements were concluded and the relevant facts in that regard will be dealt with in detail at the end of your evidence. But for the moment, would you tell the Chair what is Annexure B and what is Annexure C, the two agreements you refer to in paragraph 6.28 and 6.29? Okay. On about the 25th of August, I entered into a settlement agreement with Basas Operations, Concilium Business Consultants, Daniel John Watson, otherwise known as Cheeky Watson, and Gavin. Owned actually. Yes. Why was this agreement entered into? Because I'd resigned and they wanted me to come back urgently. They wanted me to be on a fixed-term contract for a period of 10 years. Did you enter into that agreement? Yes, I did. After your resignation in 20, on 25 August 2016? That's correct. You will give evidence in due course about why you resigned in August 2016. Um, that's detailed evidence, and we 
need to deal with it in its proper context and chronology. But what persuaded you, having resigned, to enter into this agreement called the Settlement Agreement? I was promised, Chair, things would change dramatically and all the points I'd raised previously would be addressed. That is why. And then what is Annexure C? You deal with it in paragraph 6.29. Yes. Annexure C is the incorporations of provisions regarding the consultancy agreement, which was entered into on the 18th of March. Basically, it's a settlement agreement to get out of the previous 10-year agreement. So do I understand you correctly? The agreement which provided for your re-employment after your resignation with Pasasa for a period of 10 years preceded by another agreement. Yes. Which replaced it. Very brief terms. What also provided to pay me a monthly consultancy fee, which was equated to about a tenth of the previous agreement. So you say the financial benefit of the second agreement was substantially less than the financial benefits of the first agreement? If it had been paid in full, yes. yes we'll deal with it in more detail uh, in due course and in its proper context. But your status having entered into the second agreement was, as I understand it, you had resigned and that resignation was confirmed. Yes, that's correct. And you had resigned your employment? Yes. All right. In paragraph 6.30, you deal with the income and other benefits received from your employment at Basasa and Diambu during the period 1999 to 2016. I'm sorry, before he answers that, Mr. Pretorius, uh, just for the sake of completeness, in the light of the second agreement, Annexure C, your relationship with Busasa had become that of a consultant, is that right? Correct. Okay, thank you. You may proceed, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, let's just clarify that, Mr. Greasy. Did that agreement continue in operation? The, the second agreement, the no. consultancy agreement. No, it's been cancelled. Right. Okay. And you'll give evidence as to the circumstances uh, in relation to that. Most definitely. Course. Paragraph 6.30 deals with the income and other benefits received by you during the course of your employment at the SASA in the period 1999 to 2016. Right. And you attach documents which appear to confirm this as a lecture D1 to D22. Before we go into the tables which appear further on in your statement, would you just explain to the chair what you wish to uh, in paragraph 630.1 and following? Chair, if I understand the question correctly through Advocate Pretorius, Am I to explain why I decided to put in my earnings into a document like this? No, you, you, in paragraph 630.1, you qualify or explain uh, the tables which follow. Yes. And you raise certain facts which are relevant to the tables which follow. Yes. Would you just put those before the chair, please? You can refer to paragraph 631 and following. Well, the reason I, sh uh, I put it in there was because partly in the beginning my wife was employed on paper um, as well as myself. This was done on the advice of Dr. Jurgen Smith at the moment. Two reasons, for the pension benefit and also for the tax purposes. And also the, the relevant fact is that my wife was actually my personal assistant, Malope, and when I left Malope, because I was in a senior position, she obviously wouldn't be a personal assistant at Malope anymore. So she was dismissed as I joined an opposition company. And she lost the income from employment? Yes. 
But let's look at paragraph 630.1 for a moment. You say my salary between the period 1999 to 2004 was partly in my name and partly in that of my wife's. Is that how your income and your salary was represented to the tax authorities? No. How was, how do you explain Sorry, that then? I, I, you just explain, ask me the question again, please. You say that your salary, yes. in other words, the salary due to you, yes. in terms of your contract of employment, was split partly in your name and partly that of your wife's. Correct. So your wife, was represented as receiving your salary. Part of my salary. Part of your salary. And that, I'm asking, was that representation made uh, to the revenue services, for example? Yes, it was. Right. And that was not a correct or even a false representation? Not at all. You say it was not false? I don't believe it was false. Explain that, please. Well, my wife had been working for me and she had been getting a salary. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I understand your, your question, right. or your line of questioning. Okay, maybe let me see if I can uh, yes. um, ask this. The one thing you say in, your, in the relevant paragraph is that what was your salary was given, or part of what was your salary, or was meant to be your salary, was given to you, and another part was given to your wife. Yes. Okay. Maybe before we proceed, was your wife employed by uh, Diambo Stroke Busasa when this happened? She didn't do any work, no. So she was not employed by Diambo or Busasa? No, only on paper. Yes. Now, in relation to tax, yes. was the salary that would have been represented to the tax authorities as the salary that you were being paid by Jambo, Jambo or Busasa, was it only the part that was given to you? In other words, was the part that was given to you reflected as the complete salary or was it indicated that what you actually received was only part of the salary yeah. and the other part was given to your wife. Was that reflected in communication and tax documents with the tax authorities? I misunderstood the question, I'm sorry. My answer to that is very simple. It was not correct, but it was based on the advice. So by representing that your salary um, I'm sorry, Mr. Pretorius, he, he has understood what I think you were asking yes. and he has answered that question, but I think I would prefer that he answers it directly in terms of the question I've put to him. I, I, I put the question now in my own way. Uh, your salary as represented to the tax authorities was it the salary that was being given to you only that was represented to the tax authorities as your whole salary? And, or maybe let me stop there. What's the answer to that question? The answer is yes, it was represented. As the whole salary? As the, there were two salaries paid. Yeah. Chair, if I may yeah, yeah. clarify. Both salaries were represented to the, to the tax yeah. authorities. She paid tax on what was on paper on hers, and I paid tax which was on mine. The fault that I, I think we we misunderstanding is that they split the salaries in two. Yes. But both paid taxes on those salaries. Yes. But it should not have been represented that way, I agree. Yes. So, so in other words, the part of your salary yes. that was paid to your wife, was it represented to the tax authorities as her salary instead of as part of your salary? Correct. And that was factually not correct? Correct. Thank you. And you say that this was done in order to obtain tax advantages? 
for tax purposes, your own words? I took the advice from Dr. Jurgen Smith at that stage, yes. And of course it doesn't take a tax expert to conclude that by splitting the salary you would be taxed at lower rates, both you and your wife, than a lower rate than if you'd been taxed that is correct. On your own. Is that that correct? is correct. Okay. Let's move on then to the period 2004 to 2016. Um, how was your salary paid then? I, I'm sorry again, Mr. Pichuras. I don't know whether <coughs> for completeness it's necessary to know what that salary was and how it was split, but you might... Uh, you, you that information will appear in the annexions. Later on, okay. All um, right. But we are dealing with rands and cents uh, yeah. in a minute. Okay, all right. We'll just explain what happened with your salary during 2004 uh, and until 2016, please. I wasn't comfortable with the arrangement of paying my wife. Besides, she was getting all my money anyway, Chair. Like you. So... <laughs> Quite simply, I, I spoke to Dr. Smith. But more importantly, what had happened was they wanted us to split my salary because they had two companies, Concilium and Basasa, and uh, the decision was from the management that they wanted to split my salary. In addition to your income, um, in terms of your contract of employment, as you have described, did you receive other benefits of a monetary value? Yes, I did. What were these? I would get cash bonuses, cash payments. I would get holidays. I would get gifts from Gavin Watson. Um, I, could, I could go to a shop and buy myself expensive um, clothes, that type of thing, and I've listed them all. All right. We'll come to the detail in due course. In relation to these benefits, including cash payments, did you declare these on your income tax returns? At that stage, no. The splitting of your salary, was that done for your benefit as opposed to the benefit of the company? Chair, or both of you? Chair, if I can answer that question, there would be no benefit to me. It would merely appear on the same tax number. The reason why I, it was split, I can provide you with. Okay, all right. I guess that will be dealt with in due course. Okay. Would you look at uh, page 10 of the bundle, uh, bundle S1? Uh, there's a table there. Would you explain that table to the chair, please? Most definitely. If you look at the first column, it's headed tax year. The second column is headed annual earnings. Next to it is annual earnings of my wife, additional benefits and values. And unfortunately, it's such a long time ago, we had to estimate a lot of these. And then a cash payment received. And each year is, is according to the RP5s as well that are attached here too. So in answer to the Chair's earlier question as to the details of the split between yourself and your wife, uh, one can see those figures in the table on page 10. Correct. So for example, during 1999, you are recorded as having earned 187,000 Rand and your wife, that is D. Agrizi, I presume? Yes. Is represented as having received 400,000 rand. It's natural, I suppose. Well, the implications are that uh, your wife was represented as having earned substantially more, in fact, more than double what you earned. That's true. Right. When the cause of that income was your employment? Yes. Then the column that he is headed additional benefit and value, your estimates, 
yes. my estimates, um, my meaning Mr. Greasy's. Those are approximate values of those benefits, uh, holidays and house painted and the like. Correct. And these cash payments received are separate cash payments from all the other benefits in the table, am I correct? Correct. And then if you go to page 11, the table continues to 2010, and the benefits include assistance vehicle trade-in. What is that? What happened was I was doing a lot of traveling, and I was working very hard, and the directors are all entitled to some sort of benefits and perks, and I was called in, and I was told, listen, you're doing such a great job that we'd like you to upgrade your vehicle. And I was given the difference between the current trade-in and the new vehicle as a bonus. Right. And the reference to the second-hand Audi Q7, was that a direct benefit? Yes. What happened there was I was doing a phenomenal job, apparently, and Gavin Watson had a Q7 in Port Elizabeth, and he sent it down to me and said I should take it over. And then on page 12, the table continues uh, to 2017. Is Correct. That? And in 2017, the table records payments under the head annual earnings paid by Basasa of 27 million. Am I correct? That's right. And... I'm sorry, Mr. Pretorius. I was wondering whether that's 27 million, the way those figures are, is it? I'm not good with figures, but there's no indication Anyway, that it's million, is, is it, I may, I may be wrong. Well, clarify, please. That yeah. figure that, in the table on page 12, under the heading annual earnings paid by Visasa in 2017, what is that figure? That's a combination of the retention and the separation Agreements. In other words, mm. the agreement, the first agreement and the second agreement, mm. which was paid in bulk. And uh, it, it what is, is the figure? Mm. I'm sorry, Chair. Yeah. The correct figure is 27,391,651. So it's 27,391,651 rands. Yeah. And Thank in you. the next column, additional benefits and value, your estimates? The estimates are 22 million rand. Now, were those amounts actually paid to you and received by you? No. Oh, you know what, um, Mr. Pretorius, what may have confused me is that in relation to the figures for the years before 2017, uh, the way the figures are written is that there is hyphen zero zero for cents, mm. whereas in this one there is no hyphen zero zero for cents. So that might have caused me some confusion. Thank you. Okay, so to be consistent with the way in which the figures are portrayed here in this table, the figure 27,391,651 rand should have after it a, a hyphen and two noughts. I've made a note of that. But you say these amounts weren't paid, at least in full, and... N not in full at all. They reneged on the agreement at one stage. Were not paid at all? No, I never said that. I said, Chair, that I can't remember exactly what was paid of the 22 of the agreement because that they did not pay in full. Yes, some were paid, but not yes. in full. Yeah, correct. Thank and the you. details we will deal with in due course. It's fine. The circumstances which arose at the time to cause the non-payment that you referred to, or the extent of non-payment that you referred to. Correct. All right. Let's just, um, having dealt with that schedule of income, deal with 
the structure of companies and briefly with the history of Basasa, again by way of background. We do deal with certain factual matters <coughs> in this section, um, but uh, that's the way your statement <coughs> has been compiled. Before you do that, Mr. Pretorius, just so that uh, for the sake of completeness, if I may go back to the position of your wife, yes. is my understanding correct that in Gambo stroke Busasa's books, she was reflected or would have been reflected as an employee, but act she actually did not do any work. Is that, is that, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. You will see, uh, we may just note it, that the references to annual earning de agrisi stop in 2004. That's correct. Let's deal then with the, uh, and why did that occur? If you just explain again, you mentioned it briefly. I was not happy about it, and they couldn't reflect my total salary because it would be an embarrassment to the other directors that were earning much less than I was. All right. Let's go then to paragraph seven. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, it doesn't appear to me that it's apparent from pages 10 and 11 that uh, with effect from 2005, she had fallen out of the picture. Uh, uh, if I may explain, Chief, yes. if one looks at paragraph 10, page 10 rather, yeah. you'll see her name is there in the The headings to column. the columns. Yes. Annual earning A agreesy. Mm. Annual earning D agreesy. Yes. That is the wife of Angelo agreesy. Mm. You will see that a figure is in the column headed D agreesy until the year 2004. Yes. If you turn the page, you will see that the column headed annual earning D agreesy has now disappeared and it's now headed annual earning paid by Basasa and annual earning paid by Concilium. I presume those amounts were paid directly to yourself. Correct. Well, the difficulty with that, Mr. Pretorius, is that uh, also the column written annual earnings A accuracy is no longer there at page 11. Yes. All right, so let's correct so that. So there should be something that will yeah. tell the reader the, of the change. Yes, okay. Let's just correct that then. The heading to the column on page 11, annual earning paid by Basasa. I've, I've made a note. That should be A agreesy. Correct. And in the next column, annual earning paid by Concilium, as you say in your statement, should also be reflected as in, paid in the name of A. Agrisi. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Would that uh, clear it up, Chair? I'm sorry, it should be page 2, A. Agrisi, in both columns at page 11. Is that right? Yes. Correct, Chair. Is that right? Okay. Thank you. And then that will make it clear. And if you look at paragraph 6.30.2, the position after 2004 is described there. Do you see that? Yes. yes. All right. Let's then move to paragraph 7. The company that is relevant to your evidence that preceded the company Diambu Operations PTY Limited, and I must confess, Chair, I'm not too sure of the 
manner in which the corporate change took place, whether it was simply a change of names or a transfer of shares. But prior to Diambu Operations PTY Limited, what was the name of the company relevant to the Basasa Group as it became known? It was Meritum Hostels PTY Limited. Who were the shareholders in that company? The shareholders there was Dr. Jurgen Smith and Mr. Fani van Sale. And what was the business of Meritum? They had a contract with a youth centre, a youth development centre, now called Mahale Youth Development Centre. It was known then as Meritum Youth Development Centre. It also had the Lindella contract. And undocumented migrants are kept there as they are today. All right. Just before you go on, please, because youth development centres and Lindella are going to feature prominently in the evidence that you're about to give. What is a youth development centre? A Who youth is development and what does it do? Youth development centre is where government pays us. The Department of Social Services pays Basasa or Meritum, pay them a fee to detain a child that is awaiting trial. So they would pay a fee, and for that fee they expect quite a lot of services, training, development, cleaning, catering, laundry services, medical services, social services for the, for the child. At Lindella, the provision is, is, is very similar, but more focused towards the adult and all those services with the exception of education is paid for by government. And what is the purpose of Lindella? What is its function? To hold undocumented migrants before they get deported. Right. They did. And the corporate change that took place is explained in the last sentence of paragraph 7.1 where you say, I was informed by Gavin Watson that the shares in Meritum Hostels PTY Limited were sold to himself, that's Gavin Watson, Mansell and Diambu Holdings PTY Limited. Correct. And the business was then conducted uh, by and under the auspices of Diambu Holdings PTY Limited. That's right. If you look at Annexia E1 to E2, and we need not go there for the moment, it's there for reference purposes, uh, Chair, the structure of the Basasa group of companies, uh, its affiliates and associate companies, as it appeared in 2016, the time you left Basasa, is attached in Annexia E1 and E2. Am I correct? That's right. During the course of your evidence, you will refer to a number of companies and you will refer also to trusts. Correct. Their position in what you have referred to as the Basasa group of companies in your evidence will be explained in those annexures. And if necessary, we can go there when that evidence is given. Correct. Uh, did you compile that document? I did not. Um, can you, are you in a position to verify that the information there is absolutely correct? I have not been at the company for quite some time. I did not compile it. I don't know who drafted the document. I can't verify the veracity of that document. So it's at best a guide for us, is it? It is a guide. Okay. That's at what page, Mr. Pretorius? Uh, E1 uh, is at page, sorry, page 247, and the further documents follow. So let's perhaps look at page 247. The Basasa group structure appears on page 248. Do you see that? I do. 
and the company in the top left-hand corner of page 248 of Annexure S4, Schedule S1, or Exhibit S1 rather, is Basasa Empowerment and Management Services PTY Limited. Correct. Its shareholders and directors, according to the drafter of this document, are set out there in that box at the top left-hand corner. And a subsidiary which is 100% owned by Basasa Empowerment and Management Services PTY Limited is Basasa Operations PTY Limited. That is correct. And its directors are set out uh, there, and it's a wholly owned subsidiary of Basasa Empowerment and Management Services. Is that so? Correct. And there are various related companies that appear on that page and following pages. Yes. We refer in this statement, or you refer in this statement, to, on the, on the one hand, the Basasa group of companies reflected in that annexure, and also to Basasa. When you refer to Basasa, to which company are you referring? Basasa Operations, the group. Basasa Operations. Correct. And that was your employer, I understand. Correct. Mostly. Concilium was your employer at a stage as well. Correct. Um, with regard to the document at page 247, 248, the one that we have just had a look at, you have said that you did not compile it and you don't know who compiled it and you don't know if it's uh, correct or accurate. Um, and I assume you are talking about not knowing whether it's accurate as of now. As at the time that you left Busasa, uh, do you know whether this is how, whether it reflects what the position was at that time or not? Chair, my understanding is this was as it was then. Thank you. All right. From the annexure and your own knowledge, it seems safe at least to say that the parent company was Basasa Empowerment and Management Services, PTY Limited. Correct. And within that structure, various other companies operated as part of the Basasa group of companies. That's right. Was the position constant and were the structures of the various companies um, and their relationship with, with one another constant throughout the period of your employment with Basasa? <laughs> Chair, things would change very frequently. Uh, directors would change. Um, it was often difficult, very difficult to keep track of everything. Did shareholders change? Yes, they did. Right. You're going to refer in your evidence then to a number of companies. The first is Basasa Operations PTY Limited, to which you've referred as your employer. Correct. Uh, does that now have a different name? It's now called African Global Operations, I believe. You will also refer to the security arm of the group, and I understand to Basasa Security PTY Limited. Correct? Correct. Uh, has that name changed? It's become Black Rocks Security Intelligence Services, PTY Limited. Then, in relation to youth development, was there a separate corporate entity? Yes, there was. What was the name of that entity? What is the name of that entity? The name was always Basasa Youth Development Centers, PTY Limited Chair. In 7.2.4, you refer to Leading Prospect Trading 111 PTY Limited. What Correct. was the function of that company? That is Lindella, that has the contract with the Home Affairs Department to keep undocumented migrants. Who owned the Lindella facility? Or who owns the facility? The facility, Lindella facility? where Lindella operates from is owned by Basasa Properties. But you say the operations 
are managed uh, and the contract is held by a leading prospect trading? The operations are held by leading prospect trading and they are outsourced to Basasa operations accordingly. Then in paragraph 7.2.5, you refer to a company to which you will again refer in your evidence, Sondolo IT PTY Limited. Correct. Is that now Global Technology Systems PTY Limited, also known as GTS? I believe it is known as GTS. Yes. What company is that and what did it do? That company has done quite significant work in terms of electronic surveillance and technology. For the departments of corrections, Department of Justice, I don't know who else of right of late. Right. And would you tell the chair of Pezulu Fencing Pty Limited, please? Pezulu Fencing does high security mesh welded mesh fencing, and is made. It, it became known predominantly with the Department of Corrections contract as well. That company does not appear on the organogram, I believe. No. But it is a company related to or within the Basasa group of companies, am I correct? It's related to because it's owned by Governor Watson. And then Concilium Business Consultants, PTY Limited. Tell the chair about that, please. Concilium Business Consultants used to be owned by the late Dr. Jurgen Smith, and I think his son had a small shareholding in that. And there was an agreement that uh, Mr. Petrus Fenter would take it over in, when, when Dr. Smith passed away. And um, he put it into his wife's name, so Mr. Fenter's, so that it could not be linked directly to either him or Basasa. Now, you're going to refer to a number of entities in your evidence. <coughs> Are you able at this stage to recall the full particulars and details of all these entities? It's impossible, Chair. Impossible. But to the extent that you can, you will assist the Commission? Wherever I can assist, and I remember, I will tell you the truth. But the person with the responsibility for constructing the companies and their relationship with one another, I believe, was the company secretary at Basasa, Mr. Tony Perry. That's correct. And he could assist, I presume, in any explanation that is required. Yes. All right. Uh, Chair, I see it's uh, one o'clock. May we take the long adjournment? Yes. No, that's fine. Uh, we'll take... Uh the lunch adjournment, and uh, we will resume at 2 o'clock. Thank, Thank you. We adjourn.